I still think the M1 MacBook Air is still the best choice of MacBook Air to consider in 2024-2025 even after the upcoming release of the M4 MacBook Air and let me tell you why. Even after all those design changes in the M2 and the M3s, first, you have to understand where I'm coming from here. I completed my undergraduate degree this year, basically two months or a month ago, and I've had the M1 MacBook Air, the base model, since 2022. Almost about exactly two years, if that's not convincing enough, up to 70% of my YouTube videos, including this one, were all edited by that base m1 macbook air so with all the experience i've had with that laptop i think i'm at the best position to tell you about it and not all the positions are rosy though some are actually terrible first you need to understand that the m1 macbook air is not even close to the fastest and the greatest marks out there it's not even close to them but for the value for what you get out of the price you pay for it in 2024 slash 25 that's what this video is all about if you are like financially buoyant and you can easily go for the m3 fine and good although i'll never advise you to go for the m2 yeah that's why i wouldn't even suggest that here that year 2020 was a very big year for apple arm apple silicon and the mac actually more like a revolution that led to the x elite and the arm laptop business boom now let's study a pattern here you'll see in 2020 apple had a lot to offer and they did not hold back in any way on the m1 air and that's why it's a piece of hardware that's aged very gracefully across the years till today people have very little complaints about it you could tell that when apple released the m1 air in late 2020 they were actually looking to win hearts with that machine that is hold back after winning the hearts the following year or the following two years in 2022 when apple released the m2 macbook air with half the ssd speeds due to a single nand chip that's the base model with the same 8 gig ram with very marginal performance just like adding a little more than a stopgap to make up a thousand more gigabyte six cores and like 200 more on single core that's just basically it for speed with a funny speaker placement and a weaker chassis yeah the chassis is lighter and you can tell that the kind of aluminum they use is a lighter type on the m2 air so in my opinion i think the m1 air will still be more durable than the m2 air even scratch resistant and all that when you scratch the midnight color of the m2 air it scratches and it leaves a very annoying impression as well as the fingerprint magnet the midnight version of the m2 air also is it's a very bad fingerprint magnet let's talk about that speaker placement everyone that's had the left and right speaker placements and listened to it even if it's just two speakers prefers this to like the four speaker placements inside those holes for the m2 air four smaller speakers too with more clarity but then with quieter sound the m1 air picks at up to three more decibels than the m2 air so it's more surround it gives that stereo experience it gives that you know punchy vibe more than the m2 air the m2 air is quality but it gives a more quiet but more decent vibe i don't know how to put it though yeah the sound is better on the m2 air but it's quieter i mean there has to be a reason apple still kept the speaker placement on the left and right for all their pro and pro and max laptops even the 15 inch macbook air they still put it in that same place you can tell you know they would never do that on the air if it was going to make it better so i can see i was there playing games in 2022 with the air and it's good they redeem themselves by making everything 16 gig ram like i was going to blast them for that finally like you can get the air for the same price on the website with 16 gigs of base ram there is no more 8 gig ram and that's a very good sign i'm going to talk about in this video for the m1 air when you consider the display of the m1 macbook air it supports up to 258 million colors as opposed to a billion color supports 10 bits on like 8 bit on the m1 yeah 10 bits on the m2 and m3 air so you get also 100 percent more nits yeah 400 nits versus 500 nits 
SDR brightness on the M2 and M3 is. So that's the difference with the display. And also you get that little real estate up there where the notch is slimmer bezels, more symmetric. And that place helps a lot with the menu bar. Yeah, it won't really eat out of your 16 by 10 aspect ratio. You can enjoy your full content while still seeing your menu bar up there. So it's a very reasonable, decent upgrade for your display, but still in real performance. And if you have a monitor, you'll never notice this. It's more of just aesthetics at the end. Before you get into the real world usage and performance, let's talk about those lousy benchmarks first. I ran Geekbench 6 and I got a thousand less points on the M1 Air than the M2 Air and about 200 less for single core. Yeah, that's very negligible. Don't forget the fact that it's 8 gig RAM for base model and 256 gig for base model on the M2, which is a single NAND chip that's like half the speed of ssd on the m1 air it's going to slow you down you'll never even get to enjoy the full performance of like your m2 so at the end you get similar results apple knows what they are doing the only real change here is when you compare the 3 nanometer m3 that's why you see a real performance boost with the afa one the code engine and the ray tracing that's something better the m2 only has prores encode and the code dedicated on the CPU that's like the advantage the M2 has over the M1 but most of you are not doing anything with progress are you even I haven't ever used that I also run 3D Mac and it's very capable I got up to like 26 frames per second on average and very reasonable the test is very decent for a signal light laptop yeah it's up to like half the performance of what it gets on the higher Mac so that's still very reasonable for the price and like the form factor and the battery life everything mind you i ran every single test while having about five browser tabs opening arc browsers to give you this kind of real world experience yeah because most of you would open one or two apps you have some in the menu bar running from time to time you won't just close every single app in your laptop and be using your laptop that's not realistic so Let's make this as realistic as possible. For real world use, I have done everything on this laptop in the last two years, ranging from running virtual machines. That's right, the parallels I talk about on my channel and VMware, UTM, I ran all of them tested with this base M1 Air. Unbelievable. I also wrote lots of code. I started my career as a React developer front end with this laptop also. So I've gone through every single thing with this laptop. Power-wise, the M3 Air is 1.6 times faster when you're compiling code, you might notice that. And yeah, mostly CPU tasks. And it even has that same battery life as the M1 Air, so there will always be that performance difference in the long run. When I edit my videos, I use Final Cut Pro X, now 11. And take a look at this timeline of my previous video, for instance. You can see how battery smooth it is, yeah. I render this in QHD though, but I have a lot of effects and stuff on it and you can see how it plays very smoothly. When you render regardless of the 8GB or 16GB or the M1, M2, M3, all that, regardless of that, you get very similar rendering results because of the hardware enabled rendering engine for H.264 and HEVC that's almost identical on all three models. The only thing that you would see is, let's say you use an 8 gig RAM to render and then you begin to do other stuff like to multitask. You should not multitask, just let us do its rendering in peace. And that brings us to the whole 8 gig RAM issue on Apple Silicon. When you use 8 gig RAM, you'll be forced to become very responsible about how you open apps, yeah. You would like, you can't really open apps carelessly. You have to be very careful of the apps you leave open, especially if you want to get the most out of your Mac and like not let it begin to slow down over time. When you compare like an 8 gig RAM Mac and 16 gig RAM Mac side by side, you notice that on the 16 gig RAM, the CPU and GPU get maxed out when you push them, while on the 8 gig RAM, they don't really get maxed out. So the 8 gig RAM sounds like a kind of bottleneck on the performance. It limits it, like it or not, it just that. So I'll tell you that if you use a 16 gig M1 Air and an 8 gig RAM M3 Air, to render, for instance, the M1A might have a higher chance. That's if you are multitasking while doing that. But if you're not multitasking, the M3A might beat it because the AC ground should be sufficient if left alone for just the rendering. Let me talk about my experience when I was writing my thesis for my final year. 
so i always had to leave microsoft powerpoint and microsoft word open for almost like a two month period when it was getting very heated out at school and i had to do other things while leaving them open and it was kind of ugly because Microsoft's office takes a lot of RAM. So in such a situation, I would have really love to have the 16 gig here because like you don't know, there'll be a day you are doing something in the background and you want to, you know, switch to something else. And you'll feel like I'm on Apple Silicon, it's quite expensive. I should be able to do that, right? I shouldn't be closing my apps, apps I'm currently using. So I face that and I face that challenge. Especially when I had to check out Final Cut or like edit a little video. I got kind of lax because of that RAM. The worst was running Parallels or other virtual machines. Parallels on 80 gram Mac is a no-no because Parallels itself demands a specified amount of RAM to even be able to work. And most times it wants half of what you have. So when I allocate 4 gig RAM to Parallels, what do I have to work with 4 gig? That's going to kill the swap memory completely. Speaking of swap storage, when the RAM is full, the system uses part of your SSD as swap memory. And that's why you really hate that on the M2. So thank god for that 16GB RAM Apple has brought into play. Because you can imagine with half the read and less than half the write speed, having to still use that slow SSD on the 256GB M2 Air as swap memory. The slowdown is going to be even worse than what you get on the M1F. Consider this example. I am currently working on a React project with a React tutorial video and a browser window open to render. And you can see just that with five tabs open, five normal tabs open in Arc Browser, I already consumed my full RAM and I'm on swap memory. You can imagine that. So imagine I open like some kind of complex apps. Everything's going to get slowed down. Definitely, you can't stop that. So that was like a sign that 8 gig RAM is not even enough. Even on mobile phones, 8 gig RAM is barely enough. So imagine that on a MacBook. Yeah, Apple is very efficient with their memory and all, but there is a limit to everything. There is just so much they can do before actually it becomes questionable. And that's why they had to make the base model 16 gig of RAM. Also, you guys know about the whole AI stuff going on on Apple Intelligence. And it's supported on the M1 MacBook Air all the way to the M4 Max MacBook Pro. And you can see Apple Intelligence is going to get better over time. It's still in beta, but a lot of features will come out. So you can imagine that having to run the background, still sharing that AC gram with the other apps. So you know that AC gram just isn't going to last as long as you think it would. Yeah, so you have an M1 A right now. I advise you even go swap it out for a 16 gig RAM model. You'll be safe for like at least the next three years. Probably have this feeling that you know you might be missing out on something with the M1 MacBook Air buying it four years later. Actually, you miss out on MagSafe 3, which helps you free out one of your Thunderbolt 4 ports. And MagSafe 3 is present on the M2 and the M3 MacBook Airs. Also, the M4 will get that. But let's break something down to so get a good macbook air m2 that matches the speed of the m1 macbook air you will need the 512 gig variant to have that even without 16 gig ram because the ssd speed will slow you down like it or not and that's why you need to understand the importance of a perfect middle ground well, like we are considering a computer every component has to be fast enough you can't compromise too much on one of them because it's going to slow down the rest Exactly, so if you have to now spend more to get the 512 gig ROM on the M2, I would then advise you to get the M3 with 256 since that one still has two NAND chips that's faster than what's on the M1 and then will have gone outside of the whole, you know, efficiency and price performance stuff we are trying to achieve here. On the M1, I get up to 3000 megabytes per second disk speed on a base model with 4267 mega transfers per second for the RAM speed. We also have Apple Intelligence, a display with HDR support, Dolby Vision and everything with a few color shots though, but still not really noticeable in real world years. So I'll say this finally, go for the M1 Air if your workload is very similar to mine, but at this point consider the 8 gig RAM invincible. Go for a minimum of 16 gig and 256. You can always find third party solutions for the ROM but you can't compromise that RAM 
because you can't upgrade it. It's so that's the motherboard. But you can use an external SSD, you can use cloud solutions and all that. If you get the 8 gig RAM, Apple Intelligence will take its own share, Mac will also take its own share. And tell me how much will be left for your lights workload.